Soren Kierkegaard, a summary. Kierkegaard is possibly one of the most troubled philosophers out there. His writings are full of dark and morbid jokes that tug at some of the most uncomfortable places in your heart. He's strange in every aspect of the word. And to show you what I mean, he used to write books pseudonymously, and then, after they were published, he would write pseudonymous reviews about them in the newspaper. And what's even more interesting is that he would almost always give them a very critical and bad review. This is the type of guy that we are dealing with. So how did this strange man become the father of existentialism? Well, as with most stories, we must begin by talking about Kierkegaard's early life because it truly did shape much of his writings. From a young age, Kierkegaard was told by his father that he and all of his siblings would most certainly die before the age of 34. This is because his father believed that he was under a curse from God. It's not entirely clear why his father thought this, but the prevailing theory is that he impregnated his second wife out of wedlock. It also could have been because he remarried quickly after the death of his first wife. Whatever the cause is irrelevant, because the curse was proven false for at least two of his children, Kierkegaard and his older brother. It was, however, true of his other five siblings who died early in life along with his mother. So Kierkegaard was surrounded by death and the looming curse of his father. As he watched his siblings and mother die, he was sure that he was next in line. This probably did nothing to aid in easing his anxiety. You can imagine how this would impact a developing boy and cause him to speedily write entire works on the topic of anxiety in a short amount of time because he thought that he could die at any moment. Kierkegaard is a difficult character to understand. His writings are meant to hide who he truly was. He used pseudonyms to mask his true feelings and ideas. But even amidst all his efforts, his true nature shined through. Either or is possibly the best example of this. Kierkegaard's life experience shines through so perfectly throughout the work. We can see that he was once a young man, striving after everything he ever wanted. A life searching for love and excitement and chasing the rush of feeling alive. You see, apart from the death of his siblings and mother, Kierkegaard's life was nothing difficult. He grew up in a wealthy home, had a good education studying philosophy and theology. He was on track to be successful and happy, all with his new fiancée who he was madly in love with, Regina Olsen. But we feel this tension in either or. Will Kierkegaard succumb to the ethical mode of life where he becomes everything he was prepared to be for his entire life? A man, educated, married to a well-off girl, prosperous and studious? Or will he choose to follow his carnal passions and live for himself in the aesthetic mode of life? This tension can be seen so clearly in his own words. When I was young, I forgot to laugh. Then, when I got older, when I opened my eyes and saw the real world, I began to laugh, and I haven't stopped since. I saw that the meaning of life was to get a livelihood, that the goal of life was to be a high court judge, that the bright joy of love was to marry a well-off girl, that the blessing of friendship was to help each other out in a financial tight spot, that wisdom was what the majority said it was, that passion was to give a speech, that courage was to risk being fined $10 that to be cordial was to say you're welcome after a meal, and that the fear of God was to go to communion once a year. That's what I saw, and I laughed. We as the reader can see the struggle going on in his head. He so humorously attacks all the foundations we as people rely on, and we can't help but laugh as he does it. When most people think of reading philosophical books, they don't expect to see humor, but with Kierkegaard, you can expect it. He will have you laughing as he rips apart everything you love. You will be so entertained that you may even forget for a moment that he is driving you into deep despair. Now don't misunderstand, Kierkegaard didn't see himself as a comedian, but he definitely knew no one was taking him seriously. He spoke about issues that were prevalent during his time and things that still apply to us today, but his contemporaries did not accept him. This is because he didn't fit into the mold of scholarship. He refused to accept the widely acclaimed Hegel, the one who was said to solve everything, to completely synthesize philosophy. It's no secret that Kierkegaard loathed Hegel and all of his groupies in the scholastic realm. But since no one would take him seriously and everyone mocked him for his ideas, he chose to become what they thought he was. In either or, he describes a harrowing scene. 
A fire broke out backstage in a theater. The clown came out to warn the public. They thought it was a joke and applauded. The clown repeated the warning and the acclaim was even greater. I think that's just how the world will come to an end, to general applause from wits who believe it's a joke. You see, Kierkegaard saw himself as the clown and we are the audience. He is attempting to warn us of a coming disaster and all we can do is laugh. But what is the coming disaster that he speaks of? Losing your soul both here on earth and in the afterlife. Kierkegaard was a staunch Christian who looked at all the professing Christians around him and he did not like what he saw. You see, Kierkegaard was a Lutheran and if you have never done any research on Luther or the Lutherans, I'll let you in on a little secret. Lutherans love to play the opposition. They always have an us versus them mentality. They're the type of Christians who will have Bible study over a few beers at a bar just to mock the Baptist who think drinking is a sin. Lutherans commonly follow after the example of Luther, who used his hatred for the Pope, who he thought was worse than the Antichrist, to write many oppositional pieces. Kierkegaard, on the other hand, used his hatred for Hegel and contemporary Christianity to motivate much of his writing. He looked around at Christians and mockingly called them mass men, or the Christian mob. He called them the Christian mob because they were basically just going through the motions. Everyone in Denmark probably would have professed to be a Christian because they went to church a few times and took communion and maybe said a prayer every now and again. But to Kierkegaard, he thought most of them were no more Christian than a pagan. They were all merely deceiving themselves into thinking that they were Christians, but they lacked the key ingredient of true Christianity. This ingredient is individual faith. The mark of a true Christian in Kierkegaard's eyes was faith. This idea did not come from nowhere. The Bible is clear that we are saved by faith through grace alone, but this idea of individual faith was lost in his community. As we mentioned before, he hated Hegel because Hegel's philosophy removed the need for faith. I won't get into this idea in this video, so if you want to learn more about this, watch my Fear and Trembling video that explains Hegel's view in more detail. But what we must understand is that Kierkegaard was all about being an individual. But not only an individual, but an individual who is who they truly are. Kierkegaard wanted all of the mass men to know that on the day of judgment that they themselves would stand alone before God and there would be no crowd to hide in. The mass men can try and hide while they are here on earth and blend into the crowd, but they are only fooling themselves. There is no hiding from God and their individual faith is what God will judge. This idea is laced throughout many of his works because he really didn't like seeing all of these fake professing Christians walking around. He says of Christians that they are all scheming swindlers who pretend they don't understand the Bible so that they don't have to change their behavior. Again, his criticism is so funny and it makes us laugh, but what we often miss is that he is probably talking about us. It truly is hilarious when you think about it. Every time you laugh at Kierkegaard's writings, you are laughing at yourself, and this is what he wants. He wants you to open your eyes and to see the world for what it is. He wants you to see the absurdity in things, to look below the surface of the facade. Doing so will help you to see people for who they truly are. But what's worse than that is you will see yourself for who you truly are. You will see what you once were and how far you have fallen. Kierkegaard says the most common form of despair is not being who you are. And in another place he says, the greatest hazard of all, losing oneself, can occur very quietly in the world, as if it were nothing at all. No other loss can occur so quietly. Any other loss, an arm, a leg, five dollars, a wife, etc., is sure to be noticed. You see, we slowly sell our soul to the world. It happens so subtly over time that we may not even notice it's happening. We grow up and sell our souls to school where we slave away doing what we are told. Then we get a job and we sell ourselves to a company. And all of these life decisions wear away our soul. We do it for possibly good reasons. We need a job to make money so that we can function in society. We need to be a functioning member of society so that we can maintain respect from our peers. We must suppress our controversial opinions so that we don't draw too much attention to ourselves. We wouldn't want everything we have worked for, a good reputation, money, and acceptance to vanish with a foul word that causes society to throw us out. 
in our minds, we justify throwing our soul away in order to fit in. But what are the words of Jesus on such a matter? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And of course, the true reason why Kierkegaard is writing any of this, he wants to save your soul. He does not want you to throw your soul away into the depths of despair in this carnal world. No, he wants you to realize your soul and its eternal value in God's eyes. He wants you to flee from worldly things and to turn to God. As I've said in the past, Kierkegaard's writings are so similar to the book of Ecclesiastes. The overarching message of Kierkegaard's writings is this, life is meaningless, all is meaningless apart from God. It really is amazing how Kierkegaard can come to a completely nihilistic view of the world just as so many other existential philosophers have and yet still have hope. This hope comes from God and as the Bible says, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. Kierkegaard believes wholeheartedly that God is the only solution to anxiety, dread, and nihilism. So what do you think? Is he right? Many philosophers after him don't seem to think so. Most existentialists say that nihilism is inevitable and there is no escaping it. But the father of existentialism says no, faith can save anyone. Well guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like and subscribe if you liked it. And of course, comment with your thoughts below because I always love reading the comments. Thanks for watching.